So someone sent me a message that they were noticing some performance problems with their application after upgrading to the latest version of Redux. In that version, they introduced hooks, so he converted over his code to using Redux hooks and then noticed some performance problems. Now, I think he was able to figure them out, but I figured this would be a great opportunity to look at the React profiler and show you guys how you can find performance problems in your application and then find the components that are causing them and then how we can go in and fix those. So we're here, here I have his application up and running and we're gonna do just that. So this is the application where there's some filters at the top here and then there's some cards that are being displayed. So what we're going to do is we're going to do this checkbox right here or the switch. This seems to be causing the most jank. So when I click this, there's a little bit of lag, a little bit of jank, and then it renders. So that is the thing that we're going to be taking a look at. And so to run the React profile there, we're going to right click inspect. And if we go over to the React tab here, this is where we're going to use the React Dev Tools. So you're going to need those to be able to do this. And it's a Chrome extension or Firefox. So there's this tab here called Profiler. And I think you have to have a recent version of React for this to show up. But what we can do is we can push this record button and we can start recording. And then we can do an operation that we want to record like this. And then I'm going to hit stop. And I, I can actually see how long stuff took to render and whatnot. So this bar at the top here is important. I can use this to see all the different commits that happened and how long they took. Um, this one seemed to take the longest, so we're going to focus on this guy right here. Um, so this is what I usually do is pick the biggest one and go check that one out. So here we can see this took 154 milliseconds. And we can also see the breakdown of components and see how long each one of them took to render. So we can see our main problem here is this cocktail browser. So if I click on that, I can see that took the 154 seconds. And then I can even see, and this is a component by the way, and we can see that this is broken down into this had components that it was rendering. So it was rendering a cocktail filter and a cocktail list. If we click on this, we can see it was rendering a whole bunch of small components. So we can see, click in and see even more information about it. So it seemed to be that this was taking a while because it was rendering all these little items. Uh, we can also see the number of total renders. So we can see it took two renders. We can click up here, we can see how many times this rendered, two, and it looks like two for each one of these guys. And we can see the cocktail filter took 20 seconds, or 20 milliseconds to load, and we can see individual breakdown of stuff. Okay, so now we kind of know what components are causing the problems. Let's start and focus on the cocktail list first and see what's going on there. Um, so if we take a look at the code, we can open up the cocktail list page. Um, we can see the main component is getting is this cocktails list and it has some style, some styling. But the cocktails is these right here, this list. And you'll notice the list doesn't change whenever we hit this checkbox. So really this shouldn't even be rendering when we flip this on and off. Um, and if we take a look at the component, um, it just is not, there's nothing stopping it from re-rendering every time that the cocktail browser re-renders over here. Um, and so when this re-renders, I think it is triggering that. So what we can do is we can wrap this component in a memo. So we can say react.memo and wrap that, hit save, and then we can come back and we can see uh, if this helped at all. So we can go to our profiler. Um, I'm going to run it and then I'm going to switch this on and I'm going to hit stop. Um, and so now we can see a breakdown of stuff. We can see here there's a small bump here, it took 30 milliseconds can click this, took 38 milliseconds. But we can see in general we have brought down the load time quite a bit. Um, and this one is being the largest right now. So we can see now we're memoizing this cocktail list. Um, looks like it only re-rendered once, which is awesome. And so this cocktail browser took a total of 40 milliseconds now. So we really brought it down. Um, so we can crack down into each of these individual components and continue to kind of just recursively um, take a look at them and see if we can cause them to uh, render less or to uh, take less time. So we can see now these are rendering a total of five times. I think each yeah each commit is going to have a different number of renders. Um, but this cocktail filter is another one that's re-rendering five times. So this this is another one which it's not really needing to re-render. So we can go into cocktail filter and we can take a look at it and we can see what it's doing in here. So it is taking some classes, it is using a selector, um, 
and I'm not really seeing anything that would cause it to re-render. We can try wrapping this with a react.memo and see if that helps at all. It may be causing re-renders from the use selector. The other thing I noticed is if we take a look at these git glasses and git categories, um, we can see these are some functions that are doing some operations on the cocktails list. So we can see they're getting the unique values and they are compacting them. So these are some things where they could be intensive to run. So we can memoize this so it is not running every time, only when the all cocktails changes. So this is something where we can introduce some a library like reselect, or we can introduce a oops, a use memo hook. And that is just built into React now. And we can just call get categories. And we want this to change whenever all cocktails is called or whenever it changes. And we can do the same thing with get glasses. So use memo in front. And now these are only going to recompute and do that computation whenever this changes. So let's head back to our components. Um, looks like it refreshed. Profile, start, and start this up. All right, so we can click here. We can see it's 31 milliseconds for this one. We can click on this, and we can see what's kind of causing this. So we have five renders here. You can see this is rendering a single time now. This is rendering two times, and this is rendering two times. So maybe we could go in there and try to reduce the renders even more. Um, but this is basically the strategy I would use. And a lot of times, you may just be rendering a lot of content. And you'll notice they are in this cocktail list. There's a lot of stuff being rendered. And that, these are cases where you may want to go ahead and lazy load some information um, or not display it all at once. And you can prevent some of the how long it's taking. But we seem to have memoized this pretty well. You can see how this one's doing over here, 24 milliseconds. We can go into this cocktail filter and see what's causing it to take so long. So it's taking 30 milliseconds. Um, so this seems to be the bulk of uh, what's causing this one to be so long now. If we click in, we can see the ingredient picker is taking 10 milliseconds. Um, doesn't really seem to be doing much inside of this. It's not rendering any components. We can go check it out. It's using a selector. This is one where we may be able, able to wrap a memo around it and see if we get any improvement out of that. All right, profile start stop and we can take a look it looked like it helped a little bit it shaved off like maybe three milliseconds off this but that doesn't look like it's doing a whole lot there may be some computations inside of ingredient that is taking a long time it doesn't look like it um, but maybe this uh includes no but anyway, this gives you an idea of how you can use the React Profiler. We don't have to get into all the nitty-picky of how we can get this even uh, less or more performant. This gives you a good idea of how you can use the React Profiler. So in conclusion, basically what I do is I will start the profiler, do the operation that I want to profile, and then I go and I see the largest thing that's taking the large, largest amount of time, and I just go and recursively break down where it's coming from. Okay, cocktail browser is taking the longest time. Why is it taking the longest time? I can see which components inside of it are. And then we can go see, well, should this component be taking this much time? If not, what can I do about it? But there you go. I hope that was helpful and gives you a better understanding on how you can start using the profiler.